Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. As you can see, yes, this is a talking head video, but I've got a ton of work left to do, and for those who didn't see my RX 6000 unboxing video, I'll have that right here. Basically, while I've still got a lot to do, there's tons of news to cover, so this is the only way that I could do it. So yeah, I'm talking AMD's first cDNA GPU, official RTX 3060 Ti performance numbers, RTX 3000 stock update, RX 6000 goes up for pre-order, no one will likely be able to get them, and more benchmarks for both of the upcoming RX 6000 cards. So yeah, let's get right to it. Starting things off, we have AMD's brand new Instinct MI100. Now, this is a really big deal simply because this is the first cDNA-based GPU from AMD. Remember that used to, with AMD, both the gaming and compute GPUs were all under one architecture. Well, with RDNA 1, AMD actually changed that up, and then they later introduced cDNA. This right here is the first cDNA-based GPU. So, let's actually go over it really quickly. For one, it comes with a whopping 120 CUs, that's 7,680 stream processors, a very impressive 300 watt TDP, 32 gigabytes of HPM2 memory, and here's the really big part. When it comes to performance, as you can see, the new GPU gets up to 11.5 teraflops of peak FP62 throughput. This is really big, people, seriously. It also gets 23.1 teraflops of FP32 workloads. And when we look over here, we actually see NVIDIA's newest Ampere A100. The FP64 gets 9.7 teraflops, and then the FP32 gets 19.5. So AMD's new GPU actually beats NVIDIA at compute. Now, with that said, NVIDIA does have the tensor cores. And it's fairly tough to say which applications are going to use which. It has to do with what type of uh, the way that they do their computations. But obviously with the tensor cores, NVIDIA's GPU beats it out by quite a bit, whether we're looking at FP64 or FP32. But traditional FP64 and FP32 compute, AMD's new card actually wins, which seriously, that's big. NVIDIA has always been the top dog when it comes to artificial intelligence, you know, compute GPUs, things like that. They basically invented the market. So to see AMD doing really anything is seriously impressive. All right, moving on. Next, we have the RTX 3060 Ti, which um, according to video cards has effectively become official now. I didn't really receive any kind of invite as far as I'm aware, I've been really busy, but according to them, there was an official slide that was released to the press today. And the main thing that they noted is that the 3060 Ti, we should expect it to be around 1.4 times faster than the 2060 Super. Now this right here is actually the thing that they shared, and as you can see, it does have percentages, but that is based on video cards. They actually looked and kind of compared things to give a relatively decent idea. I mean, obviously this isn't gonna be exact on the number, but I'm sure it's very close. But when we do look at it, at rasterization, or actually all of this, I'll go ahead and say that the 3060 Ti beats the 2080 Super. And honestly, that cannot be stressed enough. That is a huge jump, not just the 2080, but 2080 Super. This generation is just flat out a huge improvement from last gen. And if we look, it actually is quite a bit better. We're looking at, you know, upwards of around 10%. Well, rasterization, yep, see, we're looking at 10% here, just 1% there, and then another 10% here, and then 10% there. So, I mean, we're looking at quite a bit more powerful than the 2080 Super at rasterization and then ray tracing, it gets a little bit better. We're talking upwards of 20% faster and then rendering, of course, with the new tensor cores and all of that, it gets even better. I mean, these are massive boosts in performance. So yeah, definitely impressive. Who knows if anyone's ever gonna be able to get one, which actually, speaking of, we do have an update on that. As you can see here, obviously ASUS and all of these AIB companies are really concerned, I'm sure, because they aren't getting stock, they aren't able to send out stock, and gamers really wanna buy. It must really suck to have a product people want that you just 
can't really give them. So obviously that is cause for concern. So Azuz tweeted this out. It says, we know the demands for these new 30 series graphics cards are causing frustration for a lot of you. We see the messages and the comments and we are trying our hardest to get the graphics cards into your hands as quick as we can. To update you all, we are seeing UK shipments increase in November and we'll be shipping as fast as possible to distributors and e-tailers. Now for those in the UK, I will say fantastic. Hopefully you're excited about that. Hopefully. Uh, anyone who's trying to get an Asus card will be able to. And I will personally say, just a side note, not a guarantee, but from what I've been hearing from one of my sources, who's 98 or so percent sure, the 3070 cards uh, should be getting a really, really, or retailers, should I say, should be getting a really big shipment of 3070 cards. So hopefully those will actually be available to a lot of people soon. And I will say that I'll have links to that as well as the RX 6000 cards in the description below. So anyway, next up, it looks like the RX 6000 cards were actually listed for pre-order on Multitronic. Now, unfortunately, it has since been taken down. But before that, it actually went for sale, the 6800 XT, for upwards of 863 euros, which is really big because, at least according to WCCF Tech, we're looking at around $1,020 US. Of course, this is likely early pre-order numbers, but that's still really scary for a card that's supposed to only be, you know, $650, $700, although... This is the Sapphire Nitro custom AIB card. So obviously that can come with a bit of a premium, but man, almost $400, that's a really big premium. Hopefully this isn't gonna be an actual final price or anything like that, but this could be the actual price. So yeah, moving on, let's see. Speaking of stock, speaking of pricing, all of that, I have some bad news. Even if you can afford it and it's $1,000, you might not be able to get it, or probably so. At least according to Hardware Unbox, who in a recent video, apparently he got in touch with a few retailers, and stock appears to be very limited yet again. We were really hoping the 6,000 cards wouldn't do what the RTX 3000 did, the uh, PS5, and pretty much everything else that's been coming out lately, but unfortunately it does look like it might. This says, I'm not really expecting you to buy one, I have spoken to quite a few retailers, and stock seems pretty terrible. On the bright side, he was able to confirm that the AIB cards will be releasing on November 25th, so basically a week after reference cards release. And moving on, it looks like we have some really big news for those who are excited about overclocking Big Navi, or should I say the RX 6000 cards. In a new tweet from CapFrameX, who's actually a benchmarking tool, you can see that they mention, and let's pull it up right here, that the RX 6800 average overclock is over 2.5 gigahertz. That's Once again, that is huge, and that's quite a bit over not only the non-XT model's boost, but even the XT model's boost clock. So obviously these cards are gonna be able to do some pretty amazing overclocking. Let's just say I'm excited. And moving on, we have one of our first new benchmarks for the RX 6000 series. As you can see, this is the base mark benchmark. And first up, or really quickly, let me actually talk about this. It says the 6900 series, but according to video cards, it's in fact the 6800 non-XT model. So this is the cheaper of the three cards that AMD announced. Uh, It's the cheapest of the three cards that AMD announced. And what's pretty impressive, um, first up, we do need, don't forget with this, we actually do need to look at the API to make a good comparison. So this right here, we have DirectX 12, and you can see that while not by much, it still beats the 2080 Ti with DirectX 12. Not only that, but we can see that it pretty heavily beats the 3070 in DirectX 12, And not only that, but when we look at Vulkan, we can see that eh, it doesn't beat it by too, too much, but it still beats it. And finally for today, we have a new benchmark for the RX 6800 XT. As you can see, it's an Ashes of the Singularity benchmark, and it was found and shared by resident leaker Tom Apisak. Now, I will say that there's actually two different benchmarks. We have a 1080p crazy preset and then the crazy 4K. Now, first up, I will say the 1080p, you can see that the 6800 XT actually ties the 3080, 
although it does significantly beat the 3070. And of course, it's actually very close to the 3090, though it does lose. But really, this isn't even a very fair comparison. This is an older game and we're looking at 1080p with some pretty massive GPUs. So let's check out 4K. And as you can see, the 6800 XT actually beats both the 3080 and 3090. Now, obviously it shows the 3080 beating the 3090, but at the same time that can happen because the 3090 isn't that much more powerful than the 3080. And like I said, this is an older game, so it isn't the greatest comparison to make, but the simple fact is that the 6800 XT for about a thousand dollars less than the 3090 beat it. So that's certainly impressive. So yeah, while that does it for today, I do apologize if I was rambling a good bit, but let me know what GPU you're most excited for down in the comments below. And of course, if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and as always, have a great day.